we're going to be talking about the transition from the V3 to 4 and then what's new and different within that. Uh, but just real quick to make sure we're all on the same page, I'm just a quick definition of idle, just so that we all are starting from the same place. Um, idle 4 is the most widely accepted approach to IT service management in the world. Organizations use it, uh, its proven best practices to run their businesses from strategy to daily reality. Millions of IT professionals successfully drive their careers thanks to the Idle certification scheme. Idle offers uh, common concepts and vocabulary aligned with international standards to ease collaboration in multicultural and interconnected environments. Idle turns the challenges of the digital age into a competitive advantage. Uh, so as I said, this webinar is going to take us from uh, the learning path of the V3 scheme into the V4. Into four. They dropped the V, so it's just idle four. Um, and then we're going to look at what's new and different. So let's move into what the existing idle V3 certification scheme looks like. Uh, all of the exams that you see listed on this scheme are going to be available for at least another year. So they're saying through June of 2020. Um, and that'll become important as we talk about how a student may transition into the new scheme because there's options where um, PeopleSir and Axlos are recommending that you take some existing uh, V3 courses before you move on, depending on where you are. Uh, you'll also notice on this screen, and you're going to see it again, there's a lot of uh, each course or each exam has a credit number associated with that. Um, I think you're probably all familiar with that, but that is going to help um, determine the path as well, depending on how many credits that you might have. This is the new scheme. Uh, so as I said, this was launched in February of this year. Um, and then <clears throat> currently the only course that's available is at the bottom there, the IDLE Foundation. Um, the courses that you see on that next level up, the IDLE Specialist, IDLE Strategist, and IDLE Leader courses, they're saying they, meaning Axelos, is um, planning to release those exams in the second half of this year. I've heard mixed things. I'm not holding my breath on that, but I'm hoping that we will have something um, by the very end of this year to be able to kind of move forward. Uh, the IDLE Managing Professional, or the MP, and the IDLE Strategic Leader, or the SL, are designations that you can achieve um, when you complete the relevant exam modules within each of those streams. Uh, the courses that you'll see in the kind of purple or pink um, it's hard to tell on everyone's screen what color you're seeing. Um, boxes are going to lead you to that managing professional level um, or the strategic leader level. And then you'll notice too that there is uh, the dark blue box that is the same course that's in either of the streams. Um, so that would be a course that you would take um, regardless of which one that you wanted, which designation you wanted to get to. Um, <clears throat> the managing professional level for it does have a transition course so that is for and i'll get into this a little bit further in a few slides but that's for um, idle v3 experts who are looking to transition into um, becoming the managing professional um, within the v4 scheme so let's jump into this a little bit more as i said we're going to jump back and forth between the v3 scheme and the four scheme um, so you can get an idea of where you might want to transition um, into your learning path. So if you've only ha hold the IDLE Foundation certification in the V3 foundation level, it's recommended that you just start new at the IDLE 4 uh, foundation course. Um, there's a large amount of new material that's in the V4, or excuse me, the 4 foundation class. So it is a single exam that is required um, and there isn't any kind of transition course. Um, it's really best to start new. The Idle 4 Foundation class is about 12 hours of instruction that's typically delivered over two days. Um, and the exam is similar to the V3 Foundation exam as far as number of questions and things like that. Now, if you have your foundation and maybe one class into um, the intermediate courses, it's recommended that you either do two things. 
So if you have a low number of credits, meaning three or four of the existing V3, um, it's recommended that you either start again and take the foundations class and then move into either the strategic leader or um, managing professional paths, or you continue within the V3 foundation certification till you get to those 17 credits where then you can take that transition course that I briefly mentioned. So here we can kind of see those levels again. Um, if, the, if you have no intention uh, as a student to become a managing professional, um, you're still obviously welcome to take any of those four courses that are within that scheme that uh, are valuable to you as a as a employee and to what your relevant job skills are. Um, continue on. Here's option two that I described where you would want to just continue through to get your 17 credits and then take that transition course that you see there at the bottom. Um, just making sure I don't mention, forget anything. Uh, and learners that are eligible to take that managing professional transition module. Um, the benefit of this is that they can fast track into uh, the, um, the managing across the life cycle, so the MELC exam there. Now, if you've achieved six or more credits in the um, existing V3 scheme, uh, it is recommended that you continue collecting your V3 credits to prepare you for an easy transition into IDL4 and gain that managing professional designation. Um, you'll need to reach the 17 credits to be able to take the managing professional transition module. Uh, this will benefit end learners as they become eligible to fast tr uh, track past the V3 managing across the life cycle exam. If an end user has achieved the V3 expert, they can take the managing professional transition module as soon as it's available to be able to achieve the managing professional designation. Uh, after achieving the manager, managing professional designation, that learner would be, and if they're interested into pursuing the strategic leader stream, all they would need to take is the um, the two courses that you see there, the digital and IT strategy and the direct plan and improve course. Well, actually, no, I guess you've already taken it in the managing professional, so it's just the direct uh, digital and IT strategy, excuse me. And then once you've taken that, you'd be able to say that you have both designations and that you would be able to move into the idle master designation at that point. Um, and more information is coming that Exilus hasn't released too much details about what the idle master is going to be within the um, V3 module, or excuse me, within the four. Um, I kind of quickly went through that. So uh, Chris, are there any questions before I move into sort of what's new and different within uh, the idle four? Nope, I don't see any. Okay, great. So before we move on into this specifically, I wanted just to take a quick second to go back and think about the evolution of IDLE. Uh, so we kind of know where we were, so we know where we are today. Uh, the IDLE V1 was initially developed in the 1980s as a library of several books, uh, with each of them describing a process. Over the next decade, it was used mainly by the British government uh, and different government agencies. And then at the turn of the century, IDLE V2 became the cornerstone of service management with two core publications um, covering 10 processes and service desk. Uh, the natural progression of best practices and the need to streamline and, and improve the value of money of IT services led to the creation of the IDLE V3. There were two editions of that that were released. One was in 2017 and the other was in 2011. These provided ways uh, to manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of services with 26 processes supported by four organizational functions and aligned with the ISO 20000 standards. Uh, this was followed in 2016 by the uh, publication of Idle Practitioner, which introduced guiding principles 
to facilitate the adoption of IDLE. Uh, the latest iteration is the framework of IDLE 4, was launched, like I said earlier this year, um, and it has evolved from the previous versions by reshaping much of the established IT SM practices into the wider context of customer service, value streams, and digital transformation, as well as embracing ways of working um, such as Lean, Agile, and DevOps. So IDLE 4 was created to help the organizations connect and align the challenges created by the ever-changing technology that affects not only ITSM professionals, but a wider range of professionals working in the digital world. Uh, IDLE 4 still uses uh, elements from those previous versions that are still very much fundamental, uh, but at the same time it expands uh, on that, and now IDLE 4 also provides uh, a new digital operating, a new brand new digital operating model. The changes made mean that Idle 4 offers a practical and flexible basis of supporting to support organizations on their digital journeys. This impact of technology on businesses and how the framework integrates with other best practices were considered for making um, this update. The key four key elements. Um, are the service value stream, the four dimensions, the guiding principles, and the move from processes to practices. So we're gonna take a quick look at each of these. Quick, Chris, are there any questions before I move on? Nope, you're good. Thank you. So the service value stream, or the SVS, uh, is a key component of Idle 4, which facilitates value co-creation. It describes how all the components and activities of an organization work together to enable value creation. As the SVS has interfaces with other organizations, it forms an ecosystem and can also create value for those organizations, their customers, and their stakeholders. At the heart of the SVS is the service value chain. It's a flexible operating model for the creation, delivery, and continual improvement of services. The service value chain defines six key activities, plan, improve, engage, design and transition, obtain, build, and deliver and support. They can be combined in many different sequences, which means the service value chain allows an organization to define a number of variants uh, of value streams, such as the V3 life cycle. The flexibility of the service value chain allows an organization to effectively and efficiently react to the changing demands of stakeholders. The four dimensions. So the whole a holistic approach to service management is the key in Idle 4. You'll hear that a lot. They'll, they'll re reference it to being more holistic. Um, and what that talks about is it's defining the, defining the four dimensions that are critical to the successful facilitation of value for customers and stakeholders. So the four dimensions are organization and people. An organization needs, to, needs a culture that supports its objectives and the right level of capacity and competency among its workforce. Uh, information and technology. In the SVS context, this includes the information and knowledge as well as the technologies required for the management of services. Partners and suppliers, this refers to an organization's relationship with those other businesses that are involved in the design, deployment, delivery, support, and continual improvement of services. The value stream and processes, how the various parts of an organization work in an integrated and coordinated way is important to enable value creation through products and services. It's essential um, that an appropriate amount of focus is given on each of these dimensions so that the service value system um, remains balanced and effective. Moving on to the guiding principles. Um, Idle 4 has seven guiding principles. Uh, the guiding principles are not necessarily new, uh, but they're meant to help IT professionals adopt and adapt uh, IT, or excuse me, Idle guidance on their own specific needs and circumstances. So the guiding principles are 
uh, focus on value. Everything that an organization does needs to be needs to map directly to or indirectly to value for the stakeholders. Follow your customers' lead on what they value and work towards increasing the value of the service you provide. The second is start where you are. Do, do not start from scratch and build something new without considering what is already available to be leveraged. Uh, use existing services, processes, and people as a jumping off point. Avoid recreating the wheel um, just to do so. The third, uh, progress iteratively with feedback. Do not attempt to do everything at once. Divide the project, change, and or efforts into manageable chunks so that you can leverage what you learn and get feedback and test. Collaborate and promote visibility. Working together across boundaries produces results that have greater buy-in, more relevance to objectives, and better likelihoods of long-term success. Make sure that everyone is aware of improvement initiatives and the reasoning behind them. Next, think and work holistically. A no service or element used to provide a service stands alone. Consider the entire project, other projects, and all relevant relevant components as one because they are integrated uh, and interdependent or interrelated and interdependent. Uh, the next, keep it simple and practical. If a process, service, or action or metric provides no value or produces no useful outcome, eliminate it. Uh, organize and optimize and optimate. Uh, Human inter intervention should only happen where it needs to contribute to the value. Uh, they allow professionals to define, these guiding principles allow professionals to define, approach, and navigate difficult situations and should be followed at every single stage of delivery. Uh, idle force, focus on collaboration, automation, and keeping things simple reflect principles that you probably noticed that are defined in Agile, DevOps, and Lean methodologies. The next is the processes to practices. <clears throat> Idle so far has used process to manage IT services. Uh, this update expands the processes so that elements such as culture, technology, information and data management can be considered to get a holistic vision of the way of working. Um, this is known as practices, uh, a fundamental part of the IDLE 4 framework. The SVS includes 34 management practices, which are a set of organizational resources for performing or accomplishing an objective. These are broken down into three categories, general management, service management and technology, technical management. 15 of them are examinable and seven of those are considered key practices. You can see them there, continual super superment, service level management, change control, and so on. Uh, idle practices share the same value and importance as the current idle processes, but follow more of that holistic approach. The holistic approach of idle four puts service management and in a strategic context, it looks at ITSM development, operations, business relationships, and governance holistically and brings the different functions together. By doing this, IDLE 4 has evolved into the integrated model for digital services and improvements. So why IDLE 4? Again, uh, this holistic approach of IDLE 4 that puts service management in that strategic context uh, it looks at ITSM, development, operations, business relationships, and governance, governance holistically and brings the different functions together. By doing this, IDLE 4 has evolved into that integrative model for service management. Um, IDLE 4 is going to help IT professionals uh, compete in an increasing complex market to ensure that they stay relevant. Uh, so that is... Um, kind of the end of the prepared marks. Were there any questions? I don't see any in the chat. Does anybody want to speak and ask a question of Amanda?
So as Chris said, this is um, going to be shared out with you. We'll share the slides with as much notes as we can so um, that you really get the information that you need and can go back and review it. Okay, if you want to unshare your screen, Amanda, I will uh, do our follow-up slides. Thank you. All right, so uh, just to let you know, uh, we do have some online live classes uh, coming up for ITIL4 Foundation if you're interested. Um, we have their two-day classes. Amanda indicated they were 12 hours apiece, correct? Um, total. So total. Six each day. Yep. 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 So um, they're normally split between two days. So we have one in, coming up, a couple in July and one in August. Um, these are going to be publicly offered classes through New Horizons that you can also join. We have a special SUNY contract price that you can take advantage of if you'd like to. Um, with the online live classes, those can be taken remotely or they can be taken at one of the um, four New Horizons Logical Operations Center. They have one in Buffalo, one in Rochester, one in Syracuse, and one in Albany. So if it's more convenient for you to be off-site for any particular reason, um, you're more than welcome to come and take it from their center. Uh, if it's worthwhile for you to take it from work or from home instead, instead of incurring the travel, then you can do that as well. Um, we have a link here, the SUNY CPD Technical Programs class offerings. Um, I'm going to send this link out in the follow-up email, so if you want to take a look at it and see the pricing that we have available, um, you're more than welcome. As well as if you have enough people from your campus that want to take the class or you want to partner with another local campus to take the class all together, we can definitely arrange a private class. Um, a lot of times we can arrange it right on campus for you if that's convenient, or we can hold it here at the CPD in Syracuse or at even one of the four centers, uh, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, or Albany. So if you're interested in taking a private class instead of one of the online live classes, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we usually require eight people for a private class. So if you don't have enough within your university, feel free to contact me. I can see if anybody, any other of our campuses are interested uh, in joining you so that we can hit that minimum for you if you need a specific time to have it or want a specific time to have it. And as well, if you're looking for any other training opportunities at New Horizons Logical Operations offers, please note we do have a SUNY contract with them through the CPD that offers us different pricing. Um, please give me a call. Tell me what you're looking for, the dates, the times, uh, the class name, and how many people you're looking to send. Um, and I'd be happy to get a quote for you. There's no no commitment or anything, we can give you the commote. You can make a decision on whether or not you actually want to take advantage of that or not. Okay, I think I did see a question in the chat. So let me pull that up. <laughs> oh, I'm sharing. Hold on. Let me pull that down. There we go. All right. Um, Will the course for the certification be offered? Lisa was asking. Oh, we she, we just answered it for her. Okay, perfect. Yeah, if you're interested in any of the ITIL 3 classes as well, we don't have them on that website. So make sure if you're still looking to finish up some of those ITIL, class, ITIL 3 classes before 2020, um, you can either give me a call using the contact information in the presentation, or you can drop me an email, and I'd be happy to get you information on those as well. So if you want to get those before they go away so that you can move up to the next level with ITIL 4. So any other yeah. questions? Chris, I'll just also add that if um, anyone has questions about their specific situation regarding how many credits they may have existing and what the best path for them to be, um, I'd encourage them to get in touch with you and then you can loop me in if needed and we can talk that through to figure out exactly what would be the best and most efficient way to, to move on in, into the new um, scheme if you're interested in that. Yeah. And as well, if the dates that we have listed in our registration system aren't working for you, you need something later on in the year for budgetary reasons or time reasons or schedule reasons, just let me know that as well. I can grab you some of the dates. Um, we can also talk to New Horizons if we need to and put something specifically on the schedule as a public class, but that fits more your dates and possibly get some other people interested in it. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions uh, for Amanda or for me?
Okay, this one definitely was a short one. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, like I said, we'll put out the recording in about 24 to 48 hours along with Amanda's slides and my slides so that you can have access and it'll include the links as well. We appreciate you joining us. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.